Well, hey there, kiddos. Here is your video on quadratics day two. We're still working in our book, so find your book, turn to the page that starts with graphing quadratic functions, and we're going to talk about um, what to do to graph them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our calculator a lot. If I want to graph quadratic functions, I'm going to create a table. I'm then going to plot those points. I'm going to graph it, and then I'm going to talk about what the important parts are. So we're going to grab our calculator. And in y equals, we're going to type in that equation, the x squared minus 2x plus 1. So x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we're going to go to second and graph so we can look at our table. And it looks like my table starts at negative 2, and so I'm going to fill in what I have. So at negative 2, I have 9. At negative 1, I have 4. Then I have 1, 0, and it's back to, oops, that should be a 1. Let's make sure that is accurate. So I have my table. These are my values from my table. So now we're going to plot these onto our graph so we can see what it looks like. So it looks like at negative 2, I'm at 9, which is way up here. At negative 1, I'm at 4, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then at 2, it's back at 1. And so you can see. Here's where it started to repeat. And so if I'm going based on symmetry, I should have another point right here. So if I'm going to do my parabola, that's an arrow. Here's my parabola. And so my vertex is this point right here where it turns around. Looks like it's at 1, 0. So it's at 1, 0. So if I want my line of symmetry or my axis of symmetry for this, that's going to be the x value of my vertex. So it's just at x equals 1. Arrows as endpoints makes my domain all real numbers. And then it's concave up, so it's going to be y is greater than or equal to. And it's y is greater than or equal to the y value of my vertex, which is 0. So I'm going to have you try one. Pause the video, type this one in, plot your points real quick, go answer the questions, and then come back and check your answer. So here is the parabola I have drawn. It's, I hope you drew a prettier one than I did, but hopefully you see here's your vertex. It's at 0, 3. So my line of symmetry is at x equals 0 because it is that x coordinate of my vertex. My domain, arrows on either end, so it's going to be all real numbers. This is concave down, so my range is going to be y is less than or equal to, and it's less than or equal to the y coordinate of my vertex, which is 3. So there's those parabolas. That's how we're going to graph them. You take it, you find your table, you plot your points, you look at it. Let's see what it looks like. So let's take this a few steps further. Let's talk about how to find the coordinates of the vertex if we're going to use a calculator. So if we're going to type it in and then actually find the vertex using a calculator because we don't have a graph and we don't feel like sketching it, all of that. Here's what you do. Step number one, enter your equation into y1. Step two, graph it. So let's go ahead and take care of those two steps. So we're going to take our calculator and go back to y equals. And it looks like my equation this time is the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 2. So I have x minus 3, the whole thing squared plus 2. So there's my function. And I'm going to graph it so I can see what it looks like. So I'm going to press zoom and 6 to make sure it graphs in a standard window so I can see everything. So there is my parabola, and I can clearly see the vertex here. It's, all, it's obviously concave up. It's opening upwards. There's the vertex. So now we have to find it. This vertex happens to be a minimum. It is at the bottom of the parabola, and so that is going to be important for knowing. So number three, you need to identify if it's a max or a min. If it, so that you know what you were looking for. This one happens to be a minimum, so I'm going to go to second trace, and you see that one of my options is minimum. So I'm going to have to find my minimum, so I'm going to hit option number three. So we're going to do second trace number three, which is your minimum. It's right here. It's that one right there. And then we're going to have to follow some steps. We can't just do like we did a system of equations, go enter, 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 and have an answer. Because you see down here in the bottom of your screen, it now says left bound. It is asking you, where is the left-hand side of the vertex? Well, the left-hand side of the vertex is over here somewhere. 
So we're going to have to find our cursor. And so we're going to move it to the right until that cursor shows up on our screen. And we want it to be close to the left-hand side of the vertex, but it doesn't have to be right on top of it. So there, that's the left side of the vertex. I don't want it way up here. I want it kind of close to it. And so I'm going to hit Enter. And you're going to notice when I do, it puts an arrow up here and draws a line. Yours may not draw the line, but it will definitely put this arrow here. Now it asks for the right bound, so guess what that means? We've got to mark the right hand side. So we're going to hit our right arrow until we move that cursor over to the right hand side of our vertex. Not too close, but not too far away, so just, you know, on the other side of it. And then we're going to hit enter one more time. So now you see you've got your other arrow, and so those two arrows should be looking at each other. What that is doing is, is telling your calculator my minimum is somewhere in between here. It's in between this arrow on the left and this arrow on the right. So you want to make sure they're looking at each other. So those lines show me that I'm looking in here. And then it asks for a guess. Well, you really sort of need to make one. So we want to move our cursor to about where we think the minimum is. That looks really good. And then we hit enter. What will happen is it will then tell us, oh, well, this is where the minimum is. Well, I've got all of these numbers. Blah, it's a big, long decimal. We're going to call that 3. And so we're going to say that our vertex is at 3, 2. And I bet if we go look at our table, second graph, and we look right here, 3, 2, there is definitely a point there. And above it is the point 2, comma 3. And right below it is 4, comma 3. So it's back at 3, and so it's repeating. You see the numbers were... They're getting smaller, 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 too. Then they get bigger, bigger, bigger in that repeating pattern. That means that's going to be my vertex. Because of where I placed my guess, that's why I got those weird decimals, but that's okay. Now the line of symmetry for that, oh, hang on. Our, our, after we have second traced, we've done number three, then we need to mark left and right bound. So we've got to mark the left and right side and guess so that we can then find out what it actually is and our line of symmetry remember is that x value of the vertex so it's at x equals three so we're going to try one more i'm going to have you do it with your calculator let's do this number three here i'm going to you're going to pause grab your calculator find it and then come back and check your answer all right so hopefully you noticed when you graphed this one that this time it was a maximum and not a minimum so when you did this step for number two it was number three or Number four is really the step, and you had to choose number four because we wanted a maximum this time. So when you found your maximum, you know, I've got these really weird decimals, but it's at negative two comma three, and I'm sure that if I look at my table here, negative two comma three, and then it's repeating on either side, so that's definitely where I have symmetry. So my vertex is at negative two, three, which makes my line of symmetry at x equals negative two. It was definitely a maximum. So that's how you do that with your calculator. You just have to mark the left side and the right side. And please be careful. Make sure that you know whether you are doing a left band, uh, maximum or minimum. That will make a big difference. So let's talk about multiple representations really quick. We did this with linear equations. We talked about all the multiple ways we could represent a linear equation. Same thing's going to happen with quadratics. So we're going to talk about the way we can represent a quadratic. There are several ways. Oh, that's not very pretty. And so we're going to start, here's our equation. If one of the representations of this is the equation, and I can represent this equation with a table, well, I'm going to use my calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator, and I'm going to type in my 2x squared plus 8x minus 3 into my calculator, and I'm going to go to second graph to make my table, and then I'm going to just fill in what it says. Well, at negative 4, I have negative 3. At negative 3, it's negative 9 and negative 11 then negative 9 again, and then negative 3. So you see here's my symmetry. That right there is most likely going to be where my vertex is. So let's plot those points and let's make a graph so we can see what it looks like. So I have negative 4, negative 3, negative 3, negative 9, negative 2, negative 11, So here's your parabola, skinny little parabola. I hope yours used better than mine, but you see there's my vertex down there at negative 2, negative 11. The domain of that, it's got arrows on the end, it's going to be all real numbers. Because it's concave up, my range is greater than or equal to, and the y-coordinate of that vertex is negative 11. 
And so a mapping, the mapping is where I simply take my domain and my range values, my x's and my y's, and I fill them into these little ovals. And I don't list any values that repeat, and I list them in order from least to greatest. So the x's are easy. I've got negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. My y values, the smallest one's negative 11, then negative 9, then negative 3. And I don't have to list the negative 9 twice or the negative 3 twice. Then let's draw arrows. The negative 4 goes with negative 3, the negative 3 with negative 9, the negative 2 with negative 11, the negative 1 with negative 9, and the 0 with negative 3. And so I can see where they all go. I can see how they all match. And those are our multiple representations. So if you would like to try one, there's another one down here. You can do the table, the mapping, and the graph using your calculator and check it. But first, this must be rewritten. This is not in standard form. You will have to subtract x squared from both sides so that you can get that y value by itself. So it really becomes y equals negative x squared because I subtracted it minus 2x minus 3. So you can set this up, fill in your table, your mapping, and your graph, and if you need me to, I'll check it when you come to class. I will see you then.